Hi, this is Brian Turnbull from the National Free Flight Society Youth Development Group, and this is a 2024-2025 helicopter rubber band winding demonstration. So one of the interesting things about the event this year, this is a demo version of the helicopter I made, is the rotors are quite large to fit in the box. And if you orient the helicopter um, the other way in the box, the rotors can be even larger. So larger rotors means thick rubber bands, and thick rubber bands means winding with pretty high torque. So that's the main difference for this year. So I coach uh, four high schools and one middle school in mid-Michigan and have 18 to 20 students every year. We do thousands of test flights and my students have been state champions eight times in the last 11 years. And this procedure I'm gonna show you is exactly the same as used by my team. Uh, my observations as an event supervisor and a coach at many competitions is that 90 to 95 percent of teams do not use this rubber winding procedure. So if you're not using this, this is the number one thing you can do to improve in the event. Uh, the procedure is not difficult. Students I teach learn to do it pretty well after just half a dozen flights. Uh, winding with a torque meter is very important. Uh, if a team has limited funds, spend less on the helicopter kit and get a torque meter and use it. This torque meter, there's a video demonstration in the National Free Flight Society website resources area. This is one dollar made with a guitar string that costs a dollar and some paint stir sticks. All you have to buy besides that is glue. So you can make a torque meter that functions really well for a dollar and it only takes a couple hours to build. There's a full demo video. It shows me building it in half an hour. So a torque meter is really important, really helpful. It's difficult to take reliable data without it because the rubber band torque is the energy you're putting into the system. So step one really with the motor is to tie a good knot. And there is a link in the video that shows a good knot. Step two is to use the National Free Flight Society downloadable calculator to determine the number of turns for the, the motor will take before braking. So um, in that calculator all you have to enter is the length of the motor, the weight of the motor, and the weight of the o-rings and it will tell you approximately how many turns the motor will take. It also shows you an 80 percent factor, an 85 percent, and a 90 percent factor which is how you'd normally wind. The first use of the motor you'd use uh, wind about 80 percent of max turns then 85 and 90 as you get better and better and the motor gets broken in. So the motor I'm going to demonstrate is a 17 and a half inch loop of 0 0.080 grams per inch that weighs 2.935 grams. So we always talk about rubber band in average linear density, 0 0.080 grams per inch. We don't talk about it in widths. We don't say 1 8 inch. We don't say 3 30 seconds because the three motors I cut out of the same batch of 1 8 inch rubber vary from 0 0.0799 grams per inch to 0 0.0814 grams per inch. So they're completely different motors. You have to weigh the motor and enter the data in the downloadable calculator. So this motor will take 2,025 turns before it breaks approximately, or 135 winder turns on a 15 to 1. So the, next, the first step in winding is going to be to lubricate the motor. You can come over a little closer. A uh, popular lubricant is Armor All Original. Um, another popular one is silicone shock oil for radio control cars. <clears throat> so, a couple of squirts in the bottom of the bag with the Armor All, and you get your motor out. On each of these motors, this is the third use of the motor. <clears throat> I don't expect to brake motors, but uh, and you'll notice that the data for the motor is written on the wrapper, which I just use paper towels because they're handy. So it says the weight, the length, average linear density, and the date code for the batch, which is good data to have. So you shake it down into the bottom of the bag, you get it pretty well lubricated. You shake it out into the paper towel, pat it a couple times because you don't need it dripping wet. And I'm going to use a little attachment on the torque meter that helps remove a torque meter, a rubber band that's under high torque 
from a more delicate torque meter. So it goes on the torque meter like that. You can make these with just a couple of hooks. They could even be paper clips um, attached to some hard balsa wood. All right. So for winding, I'm going to describe the winding. Careful of the helicopter. Mm -hmm. I'm going to describe the winding and then I'm going to do it because I don't want to talk too much while I'm doing it. Um, now that the motor is lubricated, I've hooked the O-ring with the knot at the torque meter. This is just, a, you can do it either way, but this is a handy procedure and you'll see why. And I know that the target turns uh, for the first use of this motor, actually this is the third use, is 85% of the braking turns. So the target turns using the calculator is 135, 85% would be 115. So I'm shooting for 115. So I'm going to stretch the motor to six or seven times its relaxed length. So I'm going to stretch it to nine feet. And then I'm going to wind to wind 115 winder turns. So the first phase is winding to about 50%, 50 to 60% of max turns, target turns, and also about 50 to 60% of max torque. So I'm going to try to wind to about 60 winder turns at full stretch. The reason that you stretch is that the rubber band is thinner when it's stretched. And you'll see from the calculator, a thinner rubber band takes more turns. So the maximum torque on this motor, um, 0.080 grams per inch approximately, is 1.8 inch ounces. That amount of torque can really strain a winder and a torque meter. And there are some expensive winders that can't be wound, indoor winders that can't be wound that hard. So be sure if you're using your winder that you know that you can wind it that hard. These yellow plastic ones, some are sturdy enough to handle it and some get kind of difficult to wind. Um, so I'm going to wind to about 0.9 inch ounces at full stretch, about 60 winder turns at full stretch, and then I'm going to do the walk-in phase after that. So the purpose of the walk-in phase is to um, uh, keep the torque, the rate of torque increase moderate from 1 up to 1.8. So I'm going to read the torque values off the meters I'm walking in instead of counting turns. So the objective of winding is uh, primarily torque related. It's not turn related. The turn count is a reference. And you may get a few more, you may get a few less, but you're shooting for a torque. So I'm winding 60 winder turns approximately to 1.0 at full stretch. I'm walking in, keeping the rate of torque increase moderate by uh, regulating the speed that I walk in. If I walk in faster, the torque drops quicker and regulating the speed that I'm winding. So there's three nonlinear processes that you're tracking. The rate of winding and the rate of walking and the rate of torque increase. It takes a little practice, but you can get good at it. So um, the last step uh, when I've completely finished winding is I try to finish with the motor the same length as the hook to hook distance on the helicopter about 15 inches and then I'm going to back off a little torque by reversing uh, the winder two or three turns so that the torque launch torque will be about one inch ounce um, for real high performance helicopter flights you might not back off at all but when you're new to this you probably want to back off a few winder turns just so that you can get used to handling a high torque motor. All right, so I'm gonna do the winding process and describe a little more as I go. So first nine feet, so this is basically one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So that's nine feet and I'm winding uh, 60 winder turns at full stretch. Um, ignore the fact that I'm winding backwards I happened to build my demo helicopter with reverse rotating rotors uh, by accident. <laughs> <laughs> so anyhow, I'm shooting for 60 and 1.0. So I'm at 65. Now I'm going to read the torque meter values as I walk in. So I only take a step as I see that the torque needle is climbing. 
and trying to keep the rate of increase in torque moderate. Um, other critical thing is always keep the winder tur crank turning while you're walking in. If you take a step um, and you are not turning the winder crank, when you're all done, you're going to discover you have big old chains of knots sticking out in every direction. And those will severely affect your flight because they drag on the motor stick and the motor can't unwind properly. So I'm going to read torque values and end up around 120 for total turns. 0.9 Point nine, one, one, still one, still one, one point one, one point two, one point three, one point four, one point five, one point six, seven. 8, 5, 1.85. I did pretty good in the winding. I've got a few chains. Now I'm going to back off. I'm going to record my uh, what I did on my log right away. Maximum turns, maximum torque, and then I'm going to back off, I think, three winder turns. 2, 3, and now I'm at 0.95. So I'll record that on my log right away. So notice what I did here. I take, grab the whole winder with my right hand, and then I'm going to grab behind the O-ring so that I can see the whole O-ring, because this is a high torque motor. And then I'm, when I pick up the helicopter, I'm going to spin the rotor. I'm holding the spinning rotor so that the hook is facing down. And then I'm going to hold the helicopter sort of parallel to the rubber band and you see how I'm holding the helicopter by the strong part with these two fingers, the motor stick. And then this finger was keeping the rotor from uh, slipping out, the hook from slipping out. So then I'm also going to grab behind the O-ring so I can see the whole O-ring. And then you can stabilize your finger by touching the helicopter. Then I'm on the rear hook. Then I look at the motor and it's pretty good. Chains a little bit. So launching the helicopter. I'll let my camera person go around the couch. Sorry for the huge mess. Uh, we're having some home renovation done and all my entire workshop is out in the finished part of the basement, which is a little weird, but normally I have an open space here. So when you launch the helicopter, it's important to get the upper rotor spinning. So you want to get the upper rotor spinning first and then just set it on the ceiling. So, um, rubber band testing to get better and better performance. You can test at different average linear densities. I've tried 0 0.08 grams per inch, 0 0.081, 0 0.082. Slightly higher density for these 12 inch uh, rotors seems to be about right. Um, I've tried, and then you want to try different length rubber bands. So, um, because the total mass of the rubber band motor um, is a performance factor. Uh, if you're carrying more rubber band mass, more weight than the helicopter needs, it acts as ballast and brings the helicopter down quicker. So I tried a 20 inch motor that was 3.3 grams, uh, which is close to the weight of the helicopter, the four gram helicopter weight. Then I tried a 18 inch motor that was 3.1 grams and now I'm on a 16 inch motor that's like 2.9 grams. Um, and I'm getting improvements as I reduce the mass and the average linear density um, is still the same. So you can keep average linear density constant and change the length which changes the total mass of the motor or you can keep um, length the same and you can vary the uh, average linear density. Either way will get you to your objective. So when I pick the helicopter up, I don't let the rotor spin because there's one last step in winding and that's to get the remaining turns because that's a data point that helps you evaluate uh, the efficiency of the motor. So I'm going to go back to the 
winder now. And then I'm going to take the motor off in the opposite set, uh, steps from when I hooked it up. So I'll unhook it from the rear hook. And then I'm going to put it on the torque meter. And then you may have to unwind the O-ring from the front hook. Sometimes it gets twisted around the front hook. And I'll set the helicopter down. And then I'm going to count how many turns are remaining. So 1, 12, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 15, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, um, if you have very few turns remaining, then you, it would tell you to go to a lower or thinner, lower density or thinner motor. So um, that's how you use the turns remaining data in order to determine what motor, what rubber band to try next. Shorter, longer, higher density, lower density. Um, <clears throat> you would notice during my winding, uh, towards the end, the last, phase as the torque is rising quickly. I'm walking in a little a little quicker and I'm also uh, winding a little slower just to keep the torque rate build up moderate. Um, the reason to wind to a high torque 1.8 and back off is the property of the rubber band uh, known as hysteresis. Um, if I wound directly to one inch ounce that might be 1200 turns, uh, rubber band turns. So winding to 90% of maximum torque, uh, 1.8 inch ounces, means I got 1,800 turns into the rubber band. And I'm backing off um, three winder turns in this case to one inch ounce, so that's minus 50. So I have 1,750 turns at one inch ounce versus 1,200 turns at one ounce. So there's a lot more turns with this full torque winding back off to launch torque procedure. Everybody should use it. So see, this is um, 2024, 2025, um, Science Olympiad helicopter rubber band winding. Um, see the, the NIFIS National Free Flight Society website for more videos and resources. Thanks.